Hi friends! Just by the looks of it, we're going into Hinash's newly released Monochromance palette, or Press Pigment palette, I should say specifically. I did not buy the entire collection. I restrained myself and bought the items that I was most interested in, that being, of course, the palette in addition to the Boy Tears, Color Fluid Boy Tears, and the, the liner, what's it called? It has an official name. The Intra Eye Tone Pencil. The lipstick looked beautiful, if anything, down the road I might buy the rose bomb because I love me like a balmy type of a lipstick okay as of now I'm waiting on it because I was mostly interested in the palette and this video of course will have time stamps down below so you can skip over to maybe just the swatches or maybe you just want to watch the demo I bought this palette maybe uh, two weeks ago when it released and I was very happy to see the color story here very different from the originally released Butopsy palette, which I have here for comparers arms. Here they are side by side, and I think you can automatically detect uh, the roles for each, Butopsy being one for foundational essential purposes and monochromance being a little more whimsical in nature, kind of pulling from the fundamental standpoint, bringing more color into the mix. I also watched Hindash's video, which I would also recommend that you do because anytime he has Timmy, okay, you gotta watch the video. Hindash explained how he is a fine artist, he's a painter, and not only was Butopsy inspired by his work, his I uh, believe it was his, his thesis that he presented and he called a butopsy. Ronald Cormaz is also very much inspired by Hidden Nash's artwork, a painting series that he also named Monochromance. And funny enough, Hidden Nash was also working on Monochromance at the same time he was working on Butopsy, released Butopsy first, and now we have this lovely color story which is inspired by 8090s color fantasy, Hidden Nash has said, from cartoons specifically from that era. And I recognize that because that's why I wore the zebra and the neon green. You know, it's, it gave me like Nickelodeon vibes but he went with like the more softer colors in that because Hindash also mentions that he loves romance and heartbreak and all that drama and we'll get into pricing and details in a minute but just to explain further the color choices here you see that the first two pans we have are for sculpting and muting as Hindash described you can do with these shades the next two are more of the pink terracotta peach tones and here you have the splash of the lilac and the teal and I thought it very handy to have the more neutrals on top that are very nuanced you have the taupe here but you also have the khaki brown a little bit with an olive undertone and when you mix these colors with the others here it adjusts the shade the saturation and the hue in a way that does not make it appear muddy and flat on the eyes and cheeks as again this is a pressed pigment palette you can use it on both eyes and face you have the dial of intensity in your hands you have become the painter and I think it is quite thoughtful for Hindash to have a formula that you can use as a painter would when mixing colors you don't get just gray you get another version of that color and I think that definitely widens the possibility of combinations you can create on the eyes that you're not just tied to the colors presented here in each pan but when you get to cocktailing you can reveal several eye looks with beautiful gradients of color that don't exist again as you see them in the pan color wise but more variations of the teal and the khaki and the terracotta rose tones in here so I had a lot of fun using this palette but before we get in to any of that let's cover the details first. Monochromance is exclusively at the moment available on Hidden Nash Com. It retails for $70, has a suggested shelf life of 24 months, 100% vegan, weighs in at 24 grams, and it is made in Italy. A multi-use pressed pigment palette with 24-hour color payoff that can be used on the eyes and face. High performance, ultra blendable formula, buildable and made to mix or wear alone as full monochromatic looks, never muddy with a second skin feel. And as you see, all these powders are matte, but they have a beautiful silky veil-like texture that I feel very easy to layer and very easy to blend. Going in to the swatches, first we have Alter Ego, a bone beige with a peach undertone, 
and the taupe shade next to it. Match Made is a mustard muted yellow and a khaki brown neutral with olive undertones. Heavy Petal is a baby pink and the pink gets deeper with use a little more rich than what is found in Butopsy and next to it you have the raspberry shade. Heartthrob is a dusty peach next to an oxblood terracotta. Antidote is a lilac lavender juxtaposed against a deeper purple. And lastly, we have Forever Inked, an aqua mint next to a deep teal, which actually Hindash had said is inspired by that faded tattoo look. So although it looks rather blue in the pan, especially next to that aqua shade, when you wear it alone, it shears out almost to like a, a neutral olive. And on this eye today, I mixed it with some match made. And because there is that olive undertone in the khaki brown, it made it so that it doesn't appear as teal, but more olive in nature. And I absolutely love that combination. Next up, we have Boy Tears, and this retails for $25. It has a suggested shelf life of 18 months and is also made in Italy. All these products are made in Italy, so I'll just keep it at that. Color Fluid is a series of liquid colors by Hindash. Oh, does that imply that we'll be receiving more? I shy hope so. Boy Tears is a universal multi-pearl champagne shimmer Topper. It is a multi use shimmer created to transform and complement all your gradient palette applications with Butopsy and Monochromance. Key features to mention it is also vegan, waterproof, long lasting, one stroke application, pure color vibrancy, ultra thin, lightweight. Oh, and no fragrance. Thank you so much, Hindash. Judging from his tutorials, Hindash loves to work with matte mediums, and when he wanted to introduce a shimmer product, I think Hindash made sure that it was multi-use in nature, that not only can you use it on the eyes, but also on the cheeks or anywhere on the face for that matter. And he included specks of pink, blue, green, so the effect can mimic that of a pearl finish. Now, before we get into the demo, I just wanted to quickly speak upon how I I feel is the best way to apply boy tears. I experimented with different approaches and the first one being just going straight from the doe foot applicator onto your cheeks. I don't think that is the best approach. I feel it uh, more advantageous to warm it up on the back of your hand and then to use your fingers to tap the product onto your cheekbones if you wish to wear it as a highlighter. But make sure you work quickly. This does set fast and if it gets too dry, it might look spotty on the application. So do make sure it's still emollient or it's still wet when applying it on your cheekbones. And when you do, Boy Tears has a beautiful scatter effect that it has glimmer it has sparkle. If I were to make a quick comparison to Lisa Eldridge's Elevated Glow, Boy Tears is going to give you a little more of a sparkle, shimmer, twinkle effect. And Elevated Glow is more of a dewy, glow type of a hue on the cheekbone. So if you prefer or rather just have this finish as a highlighter and you're looking at Boy Tears and weren't quite sure, I like to use them both. I like to use Lisa Eldridge Elevated Glow just for like that base glow and then to top it off with Boy Tears is Wham Bam. Now again, Boy Tears has a lot more shine than Elevated Glow. It's, it's that sparkle product because remember, it can also be worn on the eyes. So to have that beautiful shine effect on the eyes, I think you definitely need that twinkle element and that just glass-like beautiful shine left behind. But I do feel it lovely on the cheekbones as well. I feel though you have to warm it up first. I don't think you'll like going straight from doe foot applicator to skin and have to tap it out. Blending it out first, I think better distributes the, the micro shimmers in here in a way that will make the application appear more even and not spotty in nature if you apply it straight from doe foot applicator. I would also recommend maybe you spritz your face first and then go in with boy tears. You'll have more of a dewy effect or maybe spritz after the application of tapping with your fingertips. I prefer fingertips 
over a brush. I did use my Sonogy a Lotus Fan Brush. Wasn't crazy about the application. I feel you have better control with a fingertip application. But again, that's just the choice I made. You don't have to use boy tears on your cheeks. I like it on my cheeks because I think the effect is lovely. It has, again, a beautiful, yes, pearl-like finish effect on the cheeks and lovely also with the powders and it doesn't interfere with the blend either if maybe you decide to go in with blush after or bored tears before however you want to layer them the powders are so fine like in nature that it doesn't appear uneven or oddly layered on the cheeks no matter again if you go with boy tears first if you go with a monochromance powder first it's is very lightweight in nature and again i just adore the finish next we have the eye tone pencil in intra retails for $19 100% vegan 18 month suggested shelf life and i'll mention it here as well i bought the lip tone pencil in hush i believe it is also $19 and they're both vegan and they both have a suggested shelf life of 18 months these are traditionally formulated wood pencils, which means they're very creamy in application, very easy to blend. They're not your budge-proof stay-all-day formula, and Hindash loves to use pencils that can blend easily because you can then set up the eye look with the liner first, or you can go in with liner and blend it out for like that smoky winged effect so you just have more versatility with a wooden pencil versus a budge proof one like uh, pat's permagel liner one of my most favorites in black coffee i that is a die hard for me but i do appreciate just the softer wooden pencil feel here in that it does make it very easy to blend. With that said, it's not going to be long wearing. If you want it to last, then I would reinforce it with a powder. If you choose to layer as such, if you go in with it just for lining purposes, it might run on you. Again, you will have to blend it out or use a powder to reinforce not only the longevity but perhaps the color richness as well so those are just a few tips that was for the eye pencil now for the lip pencil i actually have it on here is a caramel nude shade and the uh, intra eye pencil is a chocolate brown very warm in hue as you saw and i topped it off with boy tears boy tears can be also used on the lips and i just applied some some cerave ointment on i could have used a gloss okay i couldn't find my lip gloss so i just put the vaseline on my lips it works out my lips look shiny but it has a little bit of definition from the lip tone pencil and it's a great color i know hindash also released a, a matte lipstick i believe in a peach shade again i didn't grab it because i was not convinced it will look nice on me because peaches could be a little tricky okay so i held off on that but happy with the pencil because i just think it's versatile in use i could wear it on its own i could wear it with boy tears i could wear it with thousands i exaggerating with several of the beige peachy shades that i already own with the swatches and details out the way let's get into these demos let's start with boy tears again here's a close-up of the doe foot applicator and a swatch on the back of my hand and how it looks when i warm it up by swirling it around and it does leave behind a beautiful shine and again this is my preferred method for applying boy tears with my fingertips on top of makeup that is unset and once completed it just leaves behind a beautiful scatter effect that's shiny and a wearable texture that is lightweight it almost has a veil scatter effect that i think forgivable on different types of skin textures and types and here i dab it on the lips because you can wear it on there as well and it gives a nice shine without it looking like a traditional gloss and my first demo then goes in with alter ego this is how the bone color looks on its own and the taupe how it looks through my crease this is my squirrel brush so a light layer of color here it gives me a nice shadow through the crease i think appropriate to wear for every day a little color on the crease now going in with match on my lid it takes on a similar look to my skin tone 
the little more yellow there and with made the khaki brown and that slight olive undertone i think lovely through the crease as a little more richness than the taupe from the first pan but i enjoy just how easy it is to blend very easy to place along the crease as well as my lower lash line and here again is alter ego match made and a wider shot with both looks just to see how they compare to each other and quickly showing the eye tone pencil very creamy in consistency ideal for blending and i initially start this off as a smoky wing liner very easy to line across the lid without any skipping or dragging smooth on the skin i use a brush to smoke it out if you want to elongate the tail or see how it goes when you're blending more on the outer part of the lid then we go in with anti from antidote and this is a nice lilac shade here it is on the lid, solo, very light and pastel. And with the dote side, this violet has a lovely warm undertone that I think is suitable for every day. And here I go in with the taupe shade to feather the edges. And the way the colors combine, again, don't muddy up or look gray. They just create a lovely gradient. And then I place that violet on the lower lash line, the lilac shade on the inner corner, and I finish everything off with a final blend. And on the other side with Forever Inked, I go in with the inked side first on the inner and outer parts of my lid and i wing it out some to cover mostly my outer lid and now with alter just to feather out the edges some to create a softer blur effect along the edges of inked and i found it very easy to blend and shape across my lids now with forever in between the inked shades just to have that lighter mint pastel on the center of the eye and i also place that shade on the inner corner of the eyes with heartthrob throwing that into the hollows of the cheeks to give a beautiful sculpt with this terracotta hue peach shade lovely on the hollows as you see but the lighter part of the pan great for the apples of the cheeks to have that beautiful terracotta gradient and with heavy petal more of a bubblegum pink but still warm and has a lot more saturation than the pink found in Butopsy. And then I proceeded to apply Boy Tears on top of Antidote to give a little more shine to the lid. As Hindash mentioned, if you don't want your eyes to look matte, you can add Boy Tears to your eye look. And then threw on a wing with the eye tone pencil in Intra just to have a little more definition there on the lash line feathered out the edges with my shader brush and I just completed the other side by placing forever on the lower lash line and here's the final look with some mascara thrown on and I just loved how easy these looks were to accomplish and a wider shot of both the eye looks and the cheek products on with boy tears on the cheekbones and here's the lip tone pencil in hush I applied it around the perimeters of my lips left the leftover boy tears that I applied earlier in the demo rubbed it all together applied a little more boy tears because why not and here is the completed look with all products on the face lips and eyes and I was very happy with how everything turned out and today I applied match made forever ink so started off with match made first then I went in with the ink side on the outer part of my lid mixed in a little bit of made and then brushed some forever from inner part of the eye just to fluff the edges of inked and then I went in with antidote the dote shade on the majority of my lower lash line and then feathered out the edges with anti the more more lilac lavender and I love how the eye look turned out not only this eye look but the ones I created in the demo and fun fact I actually applied a little bit of the center part where the gradient meets of match made as a little bit of sculpting for the hollows of my cheeks and I went in with heavy but I was like it looked a little too pink for me with what was going on with the eyes so then I just mixed in a little bit of match and that not dulled it out but it made it a little more neutral 
on the cheeks. And that's what I appreciate this palette mostly for. The, the versatility and the flexibility of the shade mixing. Now, if you see the swatches, they're very light. They're not all that impressive unless you layer and layer the powders on each other to create that intensity for that impressive swatch look, right? But that's the advantage of having a formula that's very lightweight in nature in terms of you having the advantage of layering and and mixing without muddying up the look. This is what happens with heavily pigmented eyeshadows. You have to tread carefully. You have to make sure that you're mixing the right colors or it could be a little rough, okay? Now, some people, that's the approach they prefer. They're confident in using heavily pigmented powders. They like that challenge and it, it comes very easy to them. I think it wise to present a formula that meets in the middle of the spectrum in terms terms of makeup skill, if you will, right? For someone who is perhaps just getting into makeup or they consider themselves a beauty enthusiast, but they probably also consider themselves to be at a beginner level in terms of application. These powders are so lightweight in nature, very easy to blend that I think it allows the, the makeup user to have that confidence in layering accordingly and not worrying about the look becoming muddy in having that skipped look on the eyes. These are very soft. And if you want more color, then yes, you then have to layer on more powder. Maybe change the brush that you're using if the bristles are too soft, however, that brush will not pick up enough color and will leave behind more of a watercolor finish. Yes, I had to change my top because I had to teach class and come back. The lighting might be slightly different, but the show must go on. And with that said, the dial is in your hands in terms of how intense you want these eye looks to appear or how intense you want the color on your cheeks to appear. If I were to quickly show you Heartthrob, I believe, killer color. Whether you take it from the lighter end of the spectrum or the deeper, you can mix, you can maybe take it from the deeper end and it's going to lay down a nice shade of color. And I appreciate the hue, this terracotta peachy hue that I feel lovely as a blush sculpt, but also as a nice hue on the apples of the cheeks. It, depending on your skin tone, will determine where it appropriate to place so we can present that blushed look. You can combine both heavy petal, heart throb. If you wanted to kind of dial down the terracotta hue, you can go into Match Made and then layer that powder over and adjust from there. So again, the versatility is amazing in this palette and powder texture is very soft and silky and I enjoy that texture. I think it's easy to use with a number of brushes. Because it is pressed, I would say if you use a squirrel brush, which is a very soft bristle, you're not going to get the same dose of color as if you would with a goat hair brush. This one here is the Sonia G Lotus Cheek. It's a light angled brush. It's not tightly packed so it picks up the right amount of color but has a beautiful flow on the skin which makes for great diffusing for combining colors for a smooth blend i also enjoyed match made as like an everyday eye look it's on the warmer khaki side which is really nice to place that color through my crease alter ego is very light on me i am on the medium tan part of the spectrum so those shades are not going to appear distinct on my eyelids if you are lighter than me those would be your colors if you're deeper than me match made i think will go to a certain part of the spectrum i would say butopsy is the one that houses the deeper shades here with feel and real this chocolate neutral brown with the gray gradient and intra intra being the name of the eye pencil with fatum has the black and deep rich brown so yes i do feel these palettes complement each other well i find myself enjoying monochromans far more simply because of the inclusion of antidote and forever inked the lilac and the teal shades it just brings a little more to the picture i'm one to enjoy color as much as i love my neutrals i can do neutrals every every day, but nice to have the option of just changing the look just with integrating a little bit of 
violet or a little bit of that teal and to know you can adjust the saturation and the hue to have it appear more muted but not necessarily muddy it's a great addition and a bonus for monochromans and this shade here the purple or the, the dote side to antidote, it leans a little warm, which I think fantastic because you can wear this on its own and it's not going to appear out of place. And one who is not keen on color, they don't feel comfortable applying color on the lids, I think will find a, a non-intimidating experience with this shade, especially if it's mixed with either match made or alter ego mixing in one of those neutrals is going to adjust the color in the way that will leave still behind that lilac hue will add a little bit more character to the eye but the neutral base i think grounds it down and still presents it as an earthy eye with a little bit of purple and for a total monochromatic look you can do heart and throb on the cheeks and throw those colors through the crease and eyelid and i think it lovely especially if you want to take your blush brackets higher around the brow towards the temple pull in a little bit of heavy petal for that warmer pink closer to the center of the face so there's many ways you can combine these shades but again i think the flexibility of the palette not only represented in the shades included but also the formula just allows for that seamless experience in terms of cocktailing the shades and yes they're not the most pigmented on the first application they're very soft and again remembering Hindash's background as a painter dealing with that medium you need that variety I feel in paints to adjust the color richness to make it more oil paint like or watercolor like however you want to present your work I think is well represented here in the formula there are thinner powders on purpose so you do have those opportunities just a wider spectrum of possibility to layer the powders well again without them looking muddy on the skin being able to match a khaki brown with a teal successfully and not feeling like they're going to look just gray on the lids i enjoy this palette i really do i actually enjoyed it more than i anticipated i thought it was going to be fine like butopsy i think is great great essentials palette i saw all the colors there for that everyday soft matte look whether you want to go you know for the office look or a photo shoot video shoot whatever when i saw these colors i thought i like all those colors in one palette but to now experience the nuances that exist in these shades really could not identify those nuances just by seeing the palette online. I actually had to use it and to mix and match and then I finally understood what Hidden Ash's intentions were. Again, I've only been using it for the last three days. In terms of longevity, because they are powders and I do have this on top of my Viseart primer, I do think the, the same power is pretty good. And yes, the more you layer on the powder, the more intense the eye look will appear. I actually applied a little bit of the Boy Tears as inner corner highlight. You can apply Boy Tears on the lid if you like. So this is a great collection again i don't have the lipsticks but what i purchased i'm very happy with and i will continue to use this especially with my byredo a flora kalahari palette all as well they have the mattes in there but to have this palette and that palette together because there's beautiful like pink shimmers as well that i compare with heavy petal and i compare forever inked with that midnight metallic so it's, it's gonna be a lot of fun and then i have the tom ford cream color quad in smoky court so i'm trying to again remember what i recently purchased and how they can interweave with each other in in terms of amplifying each each other's eyeshadow experience overall i would recommend this palette if you like multi-use palettes in that you can use them on the eyes 
as well as the cheeks. You like matte shades, you're not really into shimmers and metallics. You like to mix and match colors. I would also recommend this for a beginner who doesn't actually like to use color because they're afraid of how it looks. They had bad experiences blending these types of shades. I think you should give this one a shot. These lilacs and teals are very easy to blend and very easy to mix and match so you can tread carefully you can kind of chip away at your intimidation by maybe slowly adding in forever inked on top of match and made applying those shades first or maybe lightly brush across antidote see how it looks you're like okay i'm feeling good about this then maybe add a little more of the lilac and the purple so again this it holds your hand Monochromance holds your hand <laughs> like a true romance would. And the portability is fantastic. It's thin, it's lightweight, you have a mirror inside. It's not a huge mirror, but I think uh, big enough to see this much of your face in an emergency setting, you know, if there's no mirror at all something is better than nothing. And the fact that you can do your entire face with this palette as well as eyes, mix it up, a little bit of lilac one day, the khaki brown on the other. With all that to say, I fairly enjoy this palette. If you're fine without it, again, this is not to make you buy it. It's more so if it was on your radar, you were thinking about it. it this has been my experience with Monochromance. I rather enjoy it. I, again, I enjoy it more than how I initially thought happy to have purchased this and I await any other type of palettes hidden dash the size to release uh, going forward as well as the boy tears interested to know what other colors are on the queue we shall see, of course. Let me know if you picked up Monochromaz or anything from the Monochromaz collection. If you already have this palette, what you think of it, whether you like it, you love it, all your thoughts are welcomed down below. I will see you down in the comments. And until then, that is a wrap. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video helped. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and maybe consider subscribing to my channel. And until then, I will see you in here again with another review tutorial, monochromance extravaganza, monthly favors or vlog. Take care and I will see you again soon.